to start to play the music that I sent you earlier. I'm gonna scoot back to my mat. My dog is right over there, so he might make an appearance, and if he barks, I'll have to get him to scoot away. Um, so, so go ahead and find a place that feels right for you to begin. I've been feeling in my own practice the desire to get nice and grounded these days. Maybe it is related to the hurricane that kind of came through. Um, so if that's seated for you or letting your forehead touch the ground, even if you're like in full pranam with your forehead touching the ground or in child's pose. And feel free to take a couple deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. I was able recently, and Cameron was there, I was able to teach a class outdoors and even outdoors, you know, I was like, okay, we're not going to do those big exhales out through the mouth, but they're just so freeing. So here you are in your own space. So you can allow a deep exhalation to release. And perhaps the eyes close and they're just softly set upon a point. Take a couple more rounds of deep breath, maybe finding that you can lengthen a little bit more into the inhalation and deepen a little bit more the release of the exhalation. And just allowing yourself to find this inner peace, this stillness, this pause. Because there's so much going on, not only the turbulence and the waves of the pandemic, but life is still happening on top of that, right? So on top of what's happening to the entire world, we have the things that are happening in our inner worlds. So we can tend to get so spun up in so many different directions. So whether it's just a moment of quietude that you can find in your day, taking a moment to gaze at a tree or smell a flower, which I'm going to tell a joke, but I said to my husband the other day, this pandemic has really taught us all to stop and smell the roses and really and truly to slow down, but also to make sure that we can smell the roses, right? So just allow yourself those moments when you can't roll out the map and you don't have time, you can find the moments of quiet in so many different ways of connecting in nature. And I invite you to bring awareness to your heart, maybe by touching your hands, palms down, or here in an orientation where that doesn't make sense, just kind of staying where you are. And I invite you now to find stillness. So if you are in motion, just begin to pause. I'm gonna play with this idea of being the ocean and finding the stillness beneath all of the turbulence, all of the motion. Before we go into kind of the dance, within our practice. So perhaps you set an intention, a dedication for this practice this morning to help you remember you are not one drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in one drop. Just really embodying complete and utter stillness as much as you possibly can. Letting gravity receive you. And then whatever orientation you're in, now welcome in the playfulness of the waves. So if you're seated, maybe it's sideways stretch. If you're in a child's pose, maybe you begin to move the hips from side to side or iron out the forehead. If 
you're on the belly, maybe a windshield wipering of the legs. In a very organic way, begin to awaken your practice. So where does it feel right in your body to move to next? Maybe you're perfectly fine where you are for a few more moments. Maybe you've been practicing a lot lately, or maybe you haven't been practicing much at all. So feel your way back onto your mat. You can use that same idea as the bike, right? It's like if you haven't been on a bike in a while, the first couple of moments, you're like, wait, do I know how to do this? It's the same with yoga. Where if you've been practicing every day, allowing yourself to awaken into this practice. We'll gradually all meet in downward facing dog. And I invite you to find steadiness in this first down dog. Close your eyes and just imagine that you're underneath all of the turbulence, all of the shifting, all of the noise, and you're giving yourself that moment to remember that this is all temporary. Let the breath move through the entire pose. And then begin to welcome the movement, shifting up the hips, pedaling of the heels, nodding of the head. And even while you're within the movement, remembering where you came from. And then on your next inhalation, make your way forward to plank. And steady yourself here. Imagine four corners of plank, the hands and the feet, and then pull the energy through the palms, through the toes, up the legs, the arms, all kind of gradually meeting right in your center. Allow yourself to be still and steady. Soften the eyes, soften the jaw. Gather energy through the core. One more breath here. And then let the waves ripple in. Maybe it's bending one knee, the other, maybe it's shifting the heels. Moving forward and back on the balls of the feet. And then on the next exhalation, take the journey down to the earth through Chaturanga. Once you land, allow your forehead to rest. Take your fingertips wide. And just take a very low cobra, drawing the shoulders up, back, and down. Take a moment to ground down into all 10 toes. See if even the pinky toes can find the earth. Release the glutes and fire up the power of the low back. And then begin to move this cobra around. Maybe you kind of make a figure eight with the shoulders. You pick up one foot, the other. Dip one shoulder to the center, other, whatever feels good. Gradually releasing your way back down to the mat. Hands come underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes. Pull the energy into the belly and rise back up to plank pose. 
pause here. Steady the breath, send the energy back through the heels, through the crown of the head, up through the back of the belly. Steady, spread through the fingers. One more breath here. And let the waves roll in. Maybe lowering the knees to the earth. Maybe shifting the heels. And then gathering the energy from the belly, draw the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Finding the stillness once again. Gathering all of the energy up into the belly and then sending it back down into the palms, into the soles of the feet. As you inhale, rise up onto the balls of the feet. Now moving your way to the top of the mat, coming to a forward fold. Pause here, let the head hang heavy, let everything drain. Maybe let an exhale leave the mouth. And then setting the feet up for Utkatasana. Bend the knees, send the hips back. Let the fingertips just hover above the earth. Draw the shoulders down the back. Now slowly begin to lift the belly off of the thighs. Drop down to the soles of the feet and then slowly draw the arms up. So steadying yourself in Utkatasana. If it's too much for the arms to be up with the shoulders, feel free to bring the hands to the earth. Or I'm sorry, to your heart. Steady the gaze. Allow yourself to really drop into this pose. Drop into the steadiness of it, the stillness of it. Continue to radiate through the fingertips, the crown of the head, and gathering the power in the core. One more deep inhalation. And then beginning to add the waves as you exhale, sweep the arms down. Maybe even fingertips coming the whole way to the earth. And then inhale, sweeping the arms back up. Exhale, sinking down. Inhale. Exhale, digging in. Inhale, arms rise. This time as you exhale, bring yourself the whole way down, forward fold. Inhale to lift halfway. Exhale, fold, plant the hands, step back, plank pose. Exhale, takes you down to the earth. Maybe coming to cobra or sliding the hands down by the ribs and rising, Urdhva Mukha Sanas, upward facing dog. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Gather the feet at the back of the mat and send your right leg up to the sky. So keeping the hips nice and square, draw the left hip crease back, press back through the right heel and then send as much awareness down into the hands. Pull and inhale into the lungs and imagine sending it the whole way up to the right heel. One more breath here. Then we add the movement, exhale, knee to nose, rounding spine. Inhale, sweep it back up. Exhale, pull the knee in, coil the belly. Inhale, send it back up. Exhale, knee to nose, this time stepping the whole way through. So drop down the left heel for warrior one. Same way that we came up from Utkatasana. Pick the fingertips up, let them hover. Ground down into the ball of the left foot, into the heel of the left foot. Start to pull the rib cage up off of the thigh 
and then come the whole way up, Vira Vajrasana one. Steady the gaze, drop the shoulders down, away from the ears. Breathing here, finding steadiness. Soften the jaw, maybe close the eyes. And last breath. As you exhale, sweep your hands back behind you, interlace, and fold forward inside of your right thigh. Inhale to rise back up, sweep the arms up to the sky. Exhale, fold, interlace, anchor back into the left foot. Inhale. Rise back up. Twice more. Welcoming the movement in. Last time here. This time we bring our hands the whole way down to the mat. Take a slow, steady step back to plank. Exhale your pathway to downward facing dog. Landing in the stillness for a moment and then sending the left leg long. So again, really focusing on the hips being square, drawing the right hip crease back, pressing back through the left heel, lengthening from the left hip. Spread into the fingertips, use the entire span of your hand. And then begin to ride the wave, pull the knee in and send it back up. Twice more. The next time you pull the knee in, step the whole way through. Again, take your time, steady yourself, right heel roots, fingertips hover, draw the shoulders down the back, slowly begin to peel the ribs, the belly off of the thigh as you rise up, Vira Vajrasana one. Be okay with being here for a while. Be okay with finding the resiliency that we all have inside. To be able to weather any storm. On your next exhalation, fold, interlace. Keep hugging the left hip under so that you have the same square hips that you did in your three-legged dog. Drop an anchor back underneath the right foot. Twice more. Next time you come down, move through your flow. Hands to the earth. Again, you can transform the flow into whatever you like. The double chaturanga, no chaturanga. Landing in down dog, one breath. Rise up onto the balls of the feet. Take the gaze forward. Walk or hop your way to the top of the mat. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. 
Bend the knees, sit back, Utkatasana, sweeping the arms up. Steady yourself for three breaths, finding the power in stillness. And then beginning to add the movement, bringing the arms down, grazing the mat. Inhale, sweep it back up. Twice more. And folding forward, Uttanasana. Halfway lift. Maybe hop to Chaturanga or step to plank. Take your flow through. Landing in down dog. Send your right leg up to the sky. This time, bend your knee. Open up your hip. Find steadiness here. Maybe look under your left arm so you're rooting back into the right hand. Anchor down into the left foot, breathing space into the hamstring. And then adding the movement, the hip joint mandala. Pull the knee into the nose and then peel it wide open. Twice more, full circle. And then gradually stepping the right foot the whole way through. This time, plant the left heel down for warrior two. Take a moment to just settle here, fingertips still touching the earth, pulling up through Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha. And then reach the left fingertips forward and let that motion draw you the whole way up. Vira Vajrasana 2 and pause. Send your gaze out over your right fingertips. See if you can get your knee a little further forward. Drop down into the left or to the right heel. Steady yourself. Be okay with being the ocean, with finding the stillness first. Next inhalation, flip the right palm, go back. Peaceful, reverse, warrior. Full circle with the right arm. Legs stay steady, harsh bow. Reaching forward. And then circling back, up. Exhaling forward. One more time. Come back and find the steadiness of warrior two. Exhale your way down to the earth, your pathway. Landing in down dog, send the left leg to the sky, bend the knee and open the hip. Find the steadiness, draw the right hip crease back. Press back into the left hand as much as the right hand is taking the weight. And draw the movement in. Peeling open through three hip joint model around. Stirring things up. And then gradually stepping the whole way through. Take a moment to ground down. Take a moment to hug the left hip under. And then slowly the right arm begins the movement of rising to warrior two. So take the time to adjust. Don't be too concerned about all of these anatomical things. Instead, find yourself radiating, moving down, up, in, out, 
all directions. And begin the movement. Left arm sweeps. Take two more rounds, welcoming the movement in, welcoming the change in the pose, having gratitude for having felt it fully before it changing to something else. Rising back up, finding warrior two, transferring your weight back down to the earth, your flow. One breath to land, your path to the top of the mat. Halfway lift and fold. Utkatasana, bend the knees, sink back, rise on up. This time, bring your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers, squeeze the shoulder blades, and sit a little bit deeper. Soften the shoulders. Maybe peel the toes off of the mat, pull the navel up and in. One more breath. And then welcoming the flow. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana, drawing the fists up towards the sky. Bend the knees, sit back, Utkatasana. Folding forward. And rise. Exhale this time as you fold forward, release your hands down to the earth. Halfway lift, Chaturanga Dandasan, take it back. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Inhale, sweep the right leg up to the sky. And pause. Hips squaring once again, drawing the left hip crease back. Steady yourself here. One more breath. Now, as you exhale, pull the knee to the nose. Step the whole way through. Lift the heart, lift the gaze. And then send the leg the whole way back up to the sky. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, sweep it back up. Exhale, step it through. Pause here. Hug into the inner thighs. Slowly begin to rise up on Janayasin. And as you exhale, Bring the hands back behind you, interlace the fingers. Squeeze the shoulder blades onto the back. Begin to tilt forward toward arrow lunge. And then shift the weight into the right foot, rising up, Viravadrasana three. And steady here. One last breath, and we'll add a little bit of movement. Inhale, step back, Anjaneyasana, arms rise. Exhale, tilt forward, interlace, Vira three. Inhale, step it back. Exhale, shifting forward. Last time, inhale, exhale. Inhale, step back, 
down to the earth. And you land in down dog, left leg rises, finding stillness, grounding down. Soften the face, the eyes, the jaw. And then bringing in the movement, stepping the whole way through, and then sending it back up. Again, stepping through and sweeping up. Step the whole way through, set up for your lunge. Slowly pulling yourself up from the earth, reaching the hands back, maybe taking the funky grip as you prepare, warrior three. Tilting forward and rising up. Really sending awareness into the sole of the right foot and up and out through the crown of the head. One last breath. And then adding the movement, step back on Janayasa. Exhale, Vera three. Inhale, exhale, last round, this time after you take your lunge, move the whole way through your flow. One breath to land, and then make your way to the top of the mat. Lift and lengthen, exhale, fold. Bend the knees, sit back, Utkatasana. Sweep the arms up to the sky. And then come the whole way up to standing. And pause. Bring the hands to the heart. Welcome stillness. Maybe a deep breath in, a deep breath out. you blink your eyes open, sit back, Utkatasana once again. Draw the arms up to the sky, bring the hands to the heart center. Push it back to where I'm the light. Rise up onto the balls of the feet. Press into the palms and slowly start to make your way down to toe stand. Just pause here, hug the inner thighs, press the palms together, and then reach up through the crown of the head. Steady first. One last breath. We're gonna slowly transfer ourselves down to the earth. Heels land, fingertips forward. Set down onto the seat. Draw the feet up, Navasana. Draw the shoulders down the back. Maybe bring the hands to support you here. Maybe you feel the freedom here, or maybe the freedom is in taking the earth, bringing the hands behind you. Press out through the legs. Keep the knees bent. 
Breathe into the steadiness. Imagine pulling from behind the belly button, drawing it back in. Breathe here. Be okay with the shaking and the quaking. Finding the stillness, getting nice and deep into the core. One last breath. We're going to slowly bring the feet down. Bring yourself forward the way that we came. So see if you can press down into the feet, lift the hips. Come back to toe stand, draw the heels up, bring the hands to the heart. Heels back down. Sit down, lift up, Navasan. One breath. Exhale, plant the heels. Press down, reach forward, come to toe stand, rise. Be okay with a lot of falling down, weebling and wobbling. One last time, sit back, draw the legs up. Plant it back down, lift up. Come to your toe stand, rise back up. Utkatasan, land the heels, arms rise. Come the whole way up to standing. Take a moment, pause. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Shift the weight over into the right foot. And then pull the left knee up. So feel free to bring the hand to the knee right hand to the hip, or as we move through this flow, maybe you bring the peace fingers to the big toe, and you're gonna be there, or a strap under the sole of the foot. But just get steady first, feeling the heart rising. As much as the right leg is asking for all of your strength, send it out radiating through the entire body. So before we move, we find the steadiness. One last breath here, just getting prepared. And sending the right arm up, maybe sending the left arm forward. We're gonna move through the full cycle, moving into the twist as well. So maybe you begin to take the leg out to the left. Take a breath, invite stillness for a moment. And draw the leg back around. Reach the right hand across for the outer calf or the pinky toe of the left foot. And then turn open into your twist. Maybe the left hand comes to the hip. Maybe the gaze is forward or you take it back. As you come back around, the left hand can come to the big toe side or catch the strap and maybe take the leg a little higher up. A little bend into the knee so you're not rounding to get there, right? But instead, the spine is long. One last breath. And then from here, Come back to where we began. And then lower the foot down. Go ahead and shake out the standing leg. And come back and find your stillness. Hands to the heart. Gaze is steady and strong. And we move to the second side. So shifting the weight over into the left foot, right hand, left hand to the hip. Again, strap, hand to the knee, and peace fingers to the big toe. Just land, just arrive. Try not to get all spun up into where we're going. Just steady. One last breath. As you're ready, you begin to move. Left arm sweeps up, maybe you extend the left leg out. 
rising up, maybe extending the leg out to the right. And moving through the full cycle, the right leg comes back around. Left hand comes to the strap or to the pinky toe side of the foot or the calf. And then turning open, maybe the right hand comes to the hip. Or maybe you extend the right fingertips the whole way back. Maybe you play with taking your gaze over, falling down, finding your stillness, and then dancing back into it. Soon as the pose starts to really happen is when we want to get out. See if you can stay past that point. And turning back around to face the front, the right hand catches the strap or the big toe side of the foot. Whoops. And then again, instead of rounding like I just did in the spine, take a bend into the knee and play with finding a straight spine as the leg lifts. And then coming back the way we came, releasing the right foot and shake out the leg. As you land the foot back down, maybe give your spine a little spin. Let the head, the neck be soft. And then come back around to the top of the mat. Bring the hands to the heart center. And then sweeping the arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Your path to down dog. She land in down dog, one breath in, one breath out. And so go ahead and sweep your right leg up to the sky. Exhale, pull the knee to the nose. Inhale, sweep it up, bend the knee, open the hip. One hip joint mandala, sweep it around. Straighten the right leg. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, sweep it back up. Putting it all together. Exhale, step through. Plant the left heel down, warrior one. Inhale. Rise on up. As you exhale, interlace your hands behind your back. Fold forward inside of the right thigh, coming to humble warrior. Keep hugging the right hip in. Anchor back into the left foot. Breathe here. As much as you're bowing down, draw energy back into the fist, into the fingertips, into the back of the heart space. One more powerful breath here. And then drop down into the support. Rise back up, warrior one. Draw your hands through your heart center and then heel toe your right foot over slightly so you can open up into warrior two. And then flipping the right palm, go back to your reverse warrior. Pause here, keep sending the right knee forward. Take your left hand behind you, maybe finding the hip crease as you continue to open up along the right side waist. One more deep inhalation. 
Now keeping the left arm as it is, as you exhale, come forward. Maybe the forearm comes to the thigh or maybe the right hand comes down. Keep drawing the left shoulder blade onto the back. So we're gonna play with birds of paradise. So maybe you interlace the hands here or you keep the right hand as it is. Look towards the right foot and step the left foot under the left hip. Wrap the right arm under the right thigh, shift the weight into the left foot, and then gradually making your way up to birds of paradise. Again, find the steadiness like we did when we were standing. Maybe from there, you take the movement of extending the leg out to the right. Last breath. Slowly set the right foot down. You can bring the right hand back to the mat. Step the left foot back. As you untangle the left arm, you're gonna pivot the whole way to the left. And just find a little flow in Skandasana here from side to side. And then slowly make your way back around over the right foot. Set your feet, hips width distance apart for Anjane Asan. And slowly begin to rise up. Bend into the back knee as you reach back, interlace the fingers, squeeze the shoulder blade onto the back. Start to tilt your way forward, coming to Vira Vajrasana three. And then as you exhale, you're gonna to start to come to standing. Pull your knee up towards the sky and then send the left heel forward. Bending the knee, going back, warrior three. Try not to hold the breath. Anchor down into the right foot. Kicking the left foot forward. One more round. The next time you find yourself coming through warrior three, we're going to fold the whole way down to standing splits. Lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. So you have the option to stay here, to play with balance, maybe plant the hands, bend the right knee, take a couple handstand hops. And then gradually send the right leg up, three-legged dog, bend the knee, and flip. Find a moment of stillness and let the wave draw you back around. Take a flow through, sealing the first side. To land and down dog, take a breath to arrive. And without getting spun up in the waves of where we're going, Allow yourself to be still. Inhale, the left leg sweeps. Exhale, knee to nose. 
Inhale, sweep it back up. Bend the knee, this time open the hip. Take a full circle, hip joint mandala. And then step the left foot through. Catch your lunge for a breath. And then sweep it back up. Gathering energy from the belly, stepping the whole way through. Drop down into the right foot. Take that slow, steady rise. Bureau one. Reach back, interlace. Fold forward, humble warrior. You've had to be very humble for these past months. We've learned we have so much more resiliency than we once thought. Bow down to that ability to adapt to not get completely drowned by the waves of change. Keep drawing the knee over the left heel, sending power into the right foot. And the next inhale, come the whole way up. Gather your hands to your heart center for a moment. Kind of heel toe the left foot over, setting up the foundation for warrior two as you send the arms long. Flip the left palm and come back to your reverse warrior. Again, as you're ready, maybe taking the right arm, bringing it back behind, finding the hip crease. Keep sending the left knee forward without dumping down into the joints. Pull up through the bongos. One more inhalation. And as you exhale, we're moving towards birds of paradise. So to catch your strap if you like, pause for a moment with your hand on the earth, encouraging your right shoulder back. Maybe you take the embrace here as you step the right foot up or you keep the left hand as it is and then step the right foot forward. So it's essential that your left arm is under your left thigh. So you have a leg to lift up with you, right? Right foot is under the right hip, transferring the weight there, but using the core strength to pull yourself upright first. Again, try not to get ahead of yourself. Find the steadiness. The gaze, the breath, soften the jaw. Maybe extending the left leg out. And as you're ready to come back down, left hand plants, right foot steps back. And as you unwind that right hand, moving into your skandhasana flow. So maybe this time you come the whole way down to a low skandhasana. Shifting back and forth, where you stay high. You can really sweep the arms out. And then gradually making your way back around to the top of the mat. Come to your lunge. Feet, hips with distance. Slowly begin to rise. And bringing the hands back, interlace. Hug the shoulder blades. Start to shift forward into your warrior three. And as you exhale, hollow out the belly, pulling the knee forward and sending the heel out. Back to warrior three. And coming back forward. One more round. Each wave different. Next time you find yourself in warrior three, 
Release the hands down, standing splits. So whatever feels good to you here. Maybe taking those handstand hops. Maybe playing with balancing more, bringing the hands off the earth onto the ankle. And gradually, three-legged dog with the left leg in extension, and then flipping the dog over. And try not to be in a hurry. Stay here for a breath. And then coming back around. Back here, down dog. Ride through a flow. And then coming to down dog, pause, close your eyes, and take five solid rounds of breath. After your exhalation, lower your knees down to the earth. Slide your hands back underneath your shoulders. Tuck the toes under. Move through a couple rounds of cat and cow. And then start to walk your hands back to your knees. Bring the heels of your hands to your thighs and slowly roll yourself up. Shoulders come up, back, and down. Feel free to put a little padding under the knees. Roll up your mat or put a blanket there if you like. Bring your right hand back to support right in the center of the low back. So hand can be up or down. And then reach the left arm straight forward. Imagine if you could plug down the knees into the earth. And then start to lift the left arm up to the sky. Continue to weight down into the legs. And then lift up and over the right fingertips like a waterfall. Lifting up and back. So try not to drop the head the whole way back. Instead, stay in line with the spine. Maybe the right hand can reach back to the right heel, but you continue to send the right hip or the hips forward. One more breath here. And then use an exhalation to come the whole way back up. Take both of your arms up to the sky. And then bring the hands to the heart center. Roll yourself back down. Hands come to the earth as you walk back out. And slide your left hand under your heart on the mat. Take your right arm up to the sky. You're just gonna flow for a moment here as you thread the arm under, coming down onto the right shoulder and then follow the inhale back up. Again, exhale, threading under. Inhale, rising back. Exhale, this time threading under. Safely bringing the shoulder, the head down. Maybe taking the left arm up to the sky reaching back, finding the right hip crease or any variations you enjoy.
Maybe drawing the right shoulder a little further over to the left. Bring the left hand right back down in front of the nose. Send the right arm back up. Bring the right hand down. Take a cat and cow variation. And then slowly rolling up, drawing the heels of the hands along the front of the thighs. Placing the left hand in the center of the back, low back, right arm rises. So take a moment to get steady first. Think about lifting up and over the left fingertips as you send your heart upward. So if you're feeling steady, left hand to the left heel, continuing to send the hips forward, reaching beyond the right fingertips. One more breath. Pull the navel in as you rise out. Both arms up to the sky. Hands to the heart as you walk the hands back out to all fours. And this time sliding the right hand under the heart, left arm sweeps up. Exhale to thread it under, just kind of flushing it out. Sweep it up. And thread it under. One more round. This time safely, shoulder, make sure the neck isn't in a strange orientation. Think about sliding your left shoulder under you a little more to the right. And then taking the right arm up, maybe finding the left hip crease. Again, just be mindful of your head, your neck. Breathe into the twist. Slowly bringing the right hand back in front of the nose. Slide the left arm back up. And bring the left hand down. Moving into pigeon, if you prefer a different hip opener, feel free. Or slide the right knee forward and the left leg back. So take a moment to find steadiness and then feel free to find a little quad stretch in this pigeon. So maybe from here, you bend the left knee, reach back with the left hand. You can even play with pushing the foot into the hand to get even a little deeper into the quad. Maybe play with bringing the foot into the crook of the left elbow, right hand to the thigh. Any variations? If you'd like to move down for a few breaths. Always moving at your own pace. Feel free to stay for a few more moments. And make your way back to all fours. And sliding the left knee in. 
get a sweet little counter pose on the right leg. As you come into the quad stretch. Again, if you feel like you're sitting on your left hip, put a pillow under there so you're propped up. Maybe use the strap to catch the foot. Maybe go a little deeper into the crook of the elbow or gathering the fingertips to connect. Staying there as long as it feels right. Transferring your way down. Just have gratitude for your resiliency, for your ability to adapt to change, to remember that you are the entire ocean, not the disturbances, not the turbulences, not the tsunamis, the entire ocean itself. Ready to slowly make your way back to all fours. Make your way to a modified slow lowering plank. Roll over onto your back. Enjoy any last concluding offerings to your body and movement before offering your body relaxation and shavasana. Perhaps a few deep breaths to release. You drift off into this pose of release. We have learned so much over these months to release our expectations. And we have learned that we really are adaptable beings. We are more resilient than we ever would have thought. Sometimes we see another person going through a difficult time and we think, oh, I don't know how they do it. This is an interesting time for us as a society because it's all of us in it together. Coming back to the idea of the stillness. Allow yourself to be beneath all of the motion all of the turbulence, all of the change, and just be.
If you trust that you are the ocean, you won't fear the waves. So if you have found yourself in a nice, still, peaceful place, Please feel free to just turn off. Enjoy Shavasana for as long as you like. Allow your body to soak it all up. Feel free to stay right there. You can say namaste inside the brain. Or if you're needing to move on to the next portion of your day, start to make that slow transfer to your right side. Gradually coming up, find a comfortable seat. Connecting your hands to your heart, your mind, your heart together as one. Thank you so much for showing up today. Remember, you can still find these moments of gratitude, of peace, of stillness, of beauty, any moment in our given day day that is given to us as a privilege. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaste.